Reminder for those in the room to please clear the back as much as possible and the side so that our mic microphone holders are able to move throughout. Good evening and welcome to the NCAA Women's Final Four press conference. Joining us on stage are the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach and then follow with questions for, from Caitlin Clark and Kate Martin. This time, Coach, if you'd like to provide a brief opening statement. Thank you. Um, just want to congratulate South Carolina. That is a tremendous basketball team. And uh, Coach Staley, obviously, uh, congratulations to them. Um, I'm proud of my team, though. I mean, finishing national runner-up two years in a row is an amazing feat. And um, nobody thought we were going to be here, you know, the beginning of the year. And so that makes it pretty special. But always saying goodbye to your seniors is really, really tough. And every time you see a season and it's another chapter closed, and, and that's tough. But I am gonna know we're going to look back on this and, and be very, very proud of the effort that we gave this year. This time we'll take questions from the audience. Jonathan, I see your hand first. I'll move over and from there. Thank you. Jonathan Tannenwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Caitlin, I'm sure the moment stings quite a bit. But Don Staley just gave you some really, really strong and sincere praise on the podium, on the TV broadcast for all you've done and all she believes that you're about to do in the years to come. And I wonder what that means to hear from her. Um, I think anytime somebody like Coach Daly is able to recognize you and what you did for the game is, is pretty special. And obviously she's somebody I you know, respect so much. I respect what she's done for South Carolina. I respect what she did as a, pl as a player um, for our game. And uh, you know, anybody, anytime you can get the praises of her is, is pretty special. So that means a lot. Take our next question from Nancy, if you could raise your hand, Nancy, followed by Michelle, and then um, we'll move our way up. I saw you. Thank you. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Caitlin, you said that you've not wanted to look beyond this game or whatever was next in front of you. Now, what are the emotions and what do you think going forward? And what do you think about everything that you were able to do, especially this past season? <laughs> yeah, it's certainly been a special year. And to be honest, like, after last year, I was kind of like, well, how do I top, how do we top doing what we did last year? And somehow, some way, every single person in our locker room believed. And to be honest, this year was probably more special than last year. Um, you know, the teams we had to go through to get to this point, um, you know, we won the Big Ten tournament. Uh, we lost two players that were three year starters for our program. And to be back in this position and um, come out here and battle, I mean, South Carolina is just so good. Like, there's only so much you can do. I mean, Cardoso has 17 rebounds. They have 51 as a team. We have 29. Like, hard to win a basketball game like that. You basically got to shoot perfect at that point. And, um, you know, I'm just proud of our group. We, you know, we never backed down. And, um, you know, we gave it everything we got. I think for me is just the emotions will probably hit me over the next couple of days. And I don't have much time to, you know, sit around and sulk and be upset and I don't think that's what I'm about either is you know yeah I'm sad we lost this game but I'm also so proud of myself I'm so proud of my teammates I'm so proud of this program um, there's a lot to be proud of but you know there's going to be tears it is sad that this is all over and this is the last time I'm going to put on an Iowa jersey so um, I think just reflecting back and you know soaking in everything that I was able to do because basically anybody other than me and coach Bluter never thought this was possible. Michelle, if you could raise your hand, they can get the microphone to you. Michelle Smith, the next. For Caitlin, have you allowed yourself to be excited about what's next, or have you been too focused on um, finishing your career here? I've been 110% focused on finishing my career here. Um, that's been my full focus. That's been my driving force. And I think that's what's allowed me to play such great basketball through the month of March and April and you know the end of our season, but really all year long. Like It was never. You know, the decision of whether I was going pro or whether I was staying at Iowa never was something that, you know, I stressed on too much. I knew it was something that would become clear to me over time. But um, I think for me is like, you know, I know what's next is, is soon. But at the same time, like, I'm not blind to the fact that I need to enjoy this. I need to soak this in and um, enjoy these last few moments with my teammates because these are some of my best friends. They'll be my best friends for the rest of my life. And that's what matters to me the most. We're going to stay to our right. Raise your hand so the student athletes can see you. Sorry. All right, Michael Robertson, hoopfeed.com. 
So, Caitlin, um, you've done a lot for the Big Ten. You know, the Big Ten gets maligned a lot, but you guys did a lot for the Big Ten. I'm um, sure you're disappointed, but will you have a chance to look at the impact you've made, where the ratings are through the roof, and most of it's because of you, and then, of course, uh, the Iowa team, once again, being in this position two years in a row. So what will you look back at this time frame, despite the not winning the championship? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is, you know, it's really hard to win these things. Um, I think I probably know that better than most people by now. And to be so close twice, it, it definitely hurts. But at the same time, like, you know, we were right there. We battled. Um, we took down some really great teams to get back to this point. It's something that's really hard to do. And, um, you know, I think when I think about women's basketball going forward, you know, Obviously, it's just going to continue to grow, whether it's at the WNBA level, whether it's at the college level. Like, everybody sees it. Everybody knows. Everybody sees the viewership numbers. Um, when you're given an opportunity, women's sports just kind of thrives. And I think that's been the coolest part for me on this journey is just, you know, we start our season playing in front of 55,000 people in, in Kinnick Stadium. And now we're ending it probably playing in front of 15 million people or more on TV. Um, you know, it just continues to get better and better and better. And um, that's never going to stop. You know, when you continue to give them the platform, like this, things like this are just going to continue to to happen. I'm going to stay to our right. Hi, Caitlin. Caroline Fitzgerald from Goals right Sorry. here. Hi. Um, what you and your team have accomplished in Iowa has made the whole world look at women's sports and women's basketball. Mm -hmm. How do you think all of women's sports can capitalize on this momentum right now? Oh, geez. I mean, I think... The biggest thing is, I think for us, like, this team came along at a really good time, whether it was social media, whether it was NIL, whether it was um, our games being nationally televised. I mean, we've played on Fox, NBC, CBS, ESPN. I mean, you just go down the list, and we've been on every national television, you know, channel. And I think that's been one of the biggest things that has helped us. And I think no matter what sport it is, um, giving them, give them the same opportunities, believe in them the same, invest in them the same, um, and things are really going to thrive. I mean, you see it um, with other sports, um, and I'm a big fan of other sports. Like, I try to support as much as I can, and I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, continue to invest your time, money, and resources there and continue to show up for those people and give them the opportunities. And, um, you know, I think that's what's going to help drive women's sports forward in the future. We're going to go Scott to the back row and then back to Jim. So, Scott, if you could raise your hand, we can get the microphone to you. Nope, Scott's in front of you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Hi, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. This is for all three of you. Um, what do you think the legacy of this team and this era is for Iowa basketball? And what are the, what's probably the moment that stands out? Is it something on the floor? Is it something just between among all of you? Or, you know, I guess, what can you share? We're going to start with Kate, then do Caitlin, and we're going to hold on questions for Coach. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there's, I don't know if you can really describe and put it into words, this legacy. But honestly, I mean, I just hope we've brought a lot of people joy. Um, and we've brought a lot of people together. Um, I hear all the time about how many friends that people have made in the stands just watching our games. We sold out every single home game this year at Carver. And then everywhere we go, you know, we have fans lining up wanting, you know, Caitlin's autograph, our autograph. But more than anything, you know, our legacy is, you know, what we've brought to the state of Iowa, I think, and just all the joy and the fun. And, um, you know, it, it's pretty cool to be coached by Coach Bluter. And, uh, the culture she's built at Iowa. And I think just watching us, you can see the, the joy that we have. And so um, I think that's the main thing for our legacy. Yeah, I would agree. I think this group has gone about it in the right way in every single thing that we've done in every you know phase of our life. And um, I think that's what you can be the most proud of. I think um, you know we ch truly have each other's back. Maybe we weren't always the most skilled. Maybe we weren't always the tallest. Maybe we weren't always the fastest. but. We just believed. We knew we could be in these moments. We trusted one another. Um, and that took, you know, a couple years to get to that point. And, um, you know, there's been so many great Iowa women's basketball players that come before us and, you know, allow this program to be really, really good when, you know, Kate and I and everybody else stepped on campus. And I feel like we took it to a whole other level. And um, I feel like our program is in really good hands moving forward. And um, I think more than anything, yeah, people will probably remember our, you know, two Final Fours and things like that. but. 
people aren't going to remember every single win or every single loss. I think they're just going to, you know, remember the moments that they shared at one of our games or sh watching on TV or, um, you know, how excited their young daughter or son got about, you know, watching women's basketball. I think that's pretty cool. And that's, you know, those are the things that mean the most to me when people come up to me and, you know, I don't really get offended when people say I've never watched women's basketball before. I think, you know, one, you're a little late to the party, yes, but two, uh, like, that's cool. Like, you know, we're changing the game. We're attracting more people to it. Um, but at the same time, like, those are those little things are just, you know, I think the moments that we'll remember for forever. We'll go to our back row. No, one more back behind you, Howard. Kenny wrote a WHBC radio. Caitlin, this was a game of runs. Your guys' start was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But right before the half, they hit you with a 5-0, and then they start with a 6-0 in the third quarter. Is that where the game kind of changed uh, hands and they took control? Yeah, I think they're a, they're a really good team. So, like, we knew they were going to go on runs. By no means, did when we started off as hot as we did, did we think we were going to be able to hold that lead? Like, that's just what good teams do. And um, I think – if I'm not mistaken, like there's some crazy statistic where South Carolina just outscores everybody in the second half by a bunch of points every single game. And to me, I'm just proud of our resiliency. You know, we go in the fourth quarter, I think we cut it to five, and we just weren't able to come up with a few stops and come up with a few baskets. And um, that just speaks to our team. Like that's the story it's been all year long, my whole entire career is like we never give up, like we just keep fighting. And um, yeah, I mean, their, their runs were kind of daggers, and especially when they're making pull-up jump shots. You know, that's what we're going to give up. Um, and, you know, sometimes you live with that, and you're going to live with them out-rebounding you. You know, there's only so much you can do for somebody who's 6'7". Hannah was trying her best to box her out, and she's a really good player, going to be a really great, great pro. So, um, yeah. I want to stay to our right, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Jim Trotter, the athletic ladies. Um, I want to ask a, vari a variation on questions that have been asked. Just We've talked about this being a transformative year in terms of women's college basketball. And I just wondered, to, for, for the two of you personally, what does it mean to be a part of that, to have your name associated with that? We're yeah, going to start with Kate. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I can fully grasp the whole entire concept of being a part of that right now. I think once I'm you know, older and I can reflect back on – this time, I think, you know, I'll appreciate it way more. But, I mean, just like we've said before, like seeing, you know, little girls and little boys look up to us, want our autograph, enjoy watching women's basketball, that is just something so cool and so special. And, um, you know, I idolized Iowa women's, women's basketball, but it wasn't like it is now. And it is just super cool to be a part of that, um, you know, and, I think forever will be known, like I said, our legacy as a team that's really kind of changed women's basketball in a sense. I mean, there's other teams too, but um, it's just really cool to be associated with that, and I feel super grateful. Yeah, I would say the same. I think there's, uh, you know, obviously so many amazing people that have come before us and gave us this opportunity, and um, I think, you know, to attract so many people to watching women's basketball is so special, and you know, the way people have showed up consistently throughout my career. I was going through some old pictures last night and just, like, how things have changed since my freshman year and my sophomore year, like, it was so incredible. And time goes so fast. Like, it's crazy. I can't believe this is my last career game. And uh, there's just there's just so much to be proud of. Um, I think people didn't love us for our wins. I think they loved us for the way we carried ourselves every single day, for the way we played for one another, the joy we played with, the passion we played with, the competitive spirit we had the way we high-fived and celebrated our teammates' success, like that's the reasons people love turning on Iowa women's basketball. Take our last question from Lily up at the front. Lily. Hi, I'm DJ Lily Jade from 95.9 FM. And you've had an incredible journey to this point, especially with the historical viewership. What would you say to kids striving to be you right now? We'll start with Caitlin. Uh, I would say, I think the biggest thing is, you know, this is what I kind of set up my entire career is like, nobody really, like, really believed other than myself. I think confidence, I think as a young girl, like just have confidence, a young boy, have confidence in yourself and confidence in whatever you want to be. And um, I think that was the thing my parents instilled in me from a young age is like, they never told me no. Um, they told me no a lot about other things, but not in what I wanted to do um, and what I wanted to be and, you know, the goals I wanted to chase after. And I would say that's the biggest thing is, you know, 
you can say it. You got to work for it. You got to earn it. You don't ever want anything to be given to you. And I think that's what I'm most proud of throughout my career is like I've worked really hard to be in this moment. Um, and that's where my confidence comes from. And I think that's the biggest piece of advice I'd give to the younger generation. Yeah. Very well said, but I mean, I, I used to sleep with the Iowa women's basketball poster on my ceiling. So, you know, to be in this position and uh, to play for Coach Bluter and to make it to back-to-back -back national championships, um, I mean, I just feel super grateful. It's because I worked really hard and I dreamed big and, um, you know, I'm not some all-American five-star recruit out of high school, you know, like I, I never was and, uh, you know, people believed in me. I believed in myself and here I am. So if I can do it, so can you. Thank you very much, Kate and Caitlin, Thank and you. congratulations on a tremendous season. At this time, we'll open up the floor for questions from Coach. Start with Howard. Thank you. Lisa, Howard Magdal with the Nets. Congratulations on the season you had. Um, two parts to this. One, um, I went back and looked. Caitlin's freshman year, your first games were not even on uh, terrestrial or cable TV, they had to be streamed. So I, I hear a lot of people talk about this being a moment. You already hear some people talk about Caitlin as a one-off, uh, trying to talk about the audience that is involved here. What would you say to people who try to make this about just being one player as opposed to opportunity for the audience? And then just the second one is, if you could talk about the way Caitlin's uh, performance and time at Iowa uh, is going to impact how you recruit going forward. Um, yeah, it's interesting that those games were streamed. I think we're playing at like three in the afternoon during COVID and things like that. So really not even giving anybody an opportunity to watch our games. But I mean, Caitlin has certainly been a tremendous star for our game, but there are so many stars in our game. I mean, we have many, many, and so we're just going to latch on to that next one next year, and, and uh, I, I, there's lots of them. There's just not one. Even this year, there was so many, and that's what makes her getting the Player of the Year award so special because it wasn't a runaway. It was really, really hard decision because there are so many good players out there. Um, you know, I'm hoping that re with our success, I think success breeds success. And so definitely I, I feel like recruiting going up forward, we've opened up our geogra geographic uh, footprint. And uh, I think uh, that's going to bode well for Iowa in the future. I'm going to go to Nancy, then we'll go Talia, and then Cam. Hey, Lisa, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, now that her career is over, can you put it into words what it – means and what it's going to mean going forward for not just for I mean for her for Iowa for women's basketball for all of it I mean she has I mean raised the excitement of our sport there's no doubt just because she does things in a different way than anybody else can do um, plus you know she has all the intangible she's a great student she's a great role model she does everything you know she she loves being that role model um, I, you know, I, I really think that, you know, when she came in as a freshman and she said, we're going to the Final Four, and a lot of people laughed at her and maybe even laughed at her for coming to Iowa, quite honestly. But she believed, we believed, and she got everybody else in that locker room to believe, and that is not an easy thing to do. Uh, so her just belief in everybody around her, it just grew and grew. Uh, and you could say the same thing about this year, quite honestly. Um, so... I don't know if I answered your question completely, Nancy, but I think that she has done amazing things to grow our game and do it the right way. We're going to go to our right, Talia. Hey, Coach. Talia Goodman with the next. Being here in back-to-back -back years, and especially with the expansion coming to the Big Ten next year, what's the importance and what does this mean for the Big Ten as a conference? Well, I hope it means a lot. You know, I, I'm so proud to be a part of the Big Ten conference. Um, it's a great conference. We go against super competition every single night. Uh, great coaches, great athletes, and it prepares us for this. It prepares us for being on the biggest stage. Um, but, you know, I really go back to quite a long time ago when the Big Ten said, we're going to put a network out there and we're going to be a national sports network. And I remember when Jim Delaney came into the women's catch coaches uh, room and I was like, what? You know, what is he talking about? And look at look what happened we were the first ones out there and then everybody had to follow suit to keep up so i am very very proud to be a part of the big 10 and i think our leadership is really really good with megan Kahn right now too going to stay to our right cam 
Cameron Teague with The Athletic, Lisa, everybody knows South Carolina's one of their biggest advantages is how deep they are mm -hmm. at 37 bench points. It, like The first <laughs> quarter, Bree went out, and then they were to put Raven. How hard is that to game plan for so many different weapons and so many different looks they can throw, throw at Caitlin offensively? Yeah, and that was, I mean, a huge advantage because I think they played nine people in double figures, if I'm not correct. Nine people in double figures. Um, we had six. And yeah, just to have those extra fouls and those extra legs, I mean, they didn't have to play too hard even the other night. They were arresting people the other night. Um, one thing that we've always been able to do is really push the ball and really run. And, you know, we, we did score, you know, pretty well. I mean, we scored 20 more points than other people do against South Carolina. So we did score pretty well. Um, but, yeah, Piavel will have all those fresh legs on Caitlin was really tough. And not only their depth, their height. Um, I mean, and not, I'm not just talking about their centers. They're, they're really pretty good, big at every position, which makes it hard, you know. I mean, they, were, they could recover really well uh, when we had threes. Going to go to our left, Jonathan. Thanks. Uh, Jonathan Tannenbaum from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Lisa, I'm going to ask you a similar question to what I asked Caitlin. To know that Dawn praised Caitlin on the stage out there with all that Dawn means to women's basketball, what does that mean for you in terms of who Dawn is and what does it mean to know that Caitlin is not done? She is going to continue to be a big deal and for hopefully many years to come now as a professional. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Dawn Staley is the leader of women's basketball right now. She's our Olympic coach. She is, I mean, the person that we are all looking up to. And she is, she's somebody that uh, when she says something like that to a player, um, you know, it should make them feel really good. So I'm thrilled that she acknowledged Caitlin and her greatness. I really am. Um, I think that Caitlin's going to continue to have this kind of impact in the WNBA with, I mean, Indiana's doing well with her sick ticket sales. I know Las Vegas just had to move to a different, bigger arena uh, when Indiana comes to town. So those are all really good signs that, you know, women's basketball is in a good spot. I'm going to go right here to our front row on the right. Hey, Coach Bluter is um, – what a journey with this team. And I remember when you guys signed Caitlin Clark and no one really knew who she was at that point. Um, just thinking about what uh, you've, you guys have all taught her and, and apparently like how to be a more compassionate person, how to be a leader. Um, but it's true that growth bo goes both ways. You never maybe even had a group like this before. What has this group um, taught you or ha made, or in what ways have they um, made you think differently? Um, well, people did know about her. She was the fourth best player coming out of the country. So, I mean, people did know about her, obviously. Um, you know, we really had to work hard to get her, to keep her into state. But, you know, um, you know, this group, I really hope that I haven't changed a lot, to be quite honest. I mean, I've changed in how I had to coach Caitlin because there was that line you had to walk between discipline and don't put out the fire. And so there was that line. But... Honestly, I don't think I've changed as a person. I think, you know, the values that I have now are the values that I've always had, the things that we really try to build as a team with trust and caring for each other. I mean, I've always tried to coach that way. We're going to go to our left. Robert Weber is Klubman.com. Congrats on a great season, Coach. Um, I want to ask you about Hannah Stolke. Uh, you know, very likely without her performance in the semifinals, you guys aren't here today. Um, can you just tell me how she's grown just this season and even in these last couple weeks uh, against the really tough assignments uh, throughout the contest? Yeah, I mean, Hannah Stalky, first of all, was a power forward up until about beginning of November. So she really has adapted to her position. She didn't really want to be a center, but we convinced her that she needed that. If it was best for the team, she would do it. Um, she obviously has improved her game so much this year and used, you know, and, and everybody focused on she's not tall enough, she's not tall. You have other assets, right? You've got speed, you've got agility, use those assets. Um, and, and she has done it. And even though she wasn't playing the position she really desired and wanted to play, didn't matter. She came and gave it everything she had all day. And we've all, you know, talked about her growth as a young woman as far as, you know, mentally and confidence wise. And, you know, that gives me a lot of joy when I see my women just growing in that area of their lives because I know that's going to last forever. 
Going to shift to our right, Coach. All right, uh, Mike Robertson, uh, hoopfeed.com. So, Coach, um, maybe a consolation scenario, but you lost to Coach Mulkey last year, four titles for her, and then you lose to Staley this year, three titles for her. So what does that put you for the standard uh, that you may have reached, knowing that you did really well against these two coaches, but just came up a little short? Kind of makes me a double loser right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> quite honestly, um, you know, it's, um, it's tough, you know, but I know how hard it is to get here too. Um, I, you know, I say that tongue in cheek because I know it is really, really difficult to get to a Final Four. And for us to be national runner-ups two years in a row, I'm never going to apologize. So many people last year kept, oh, you'll do it next time. Like, it was, like, terrible that we didn't win the national championship. And so many people said that to me. And I'm like, darn, you guys, we were national runner-ups. That's pretty good, too. Um, so I'm never going to apologize for finishing second in the country. Um, but sure it would be nice to win one. <laughs> we're going to go to our left with Lily, and then we'll go to the back. Hi, I'm DJ Lily Jade from 95.9 FM Cleveland. And how did it feel to coach these amazing girls? It's so empowering being around these women. I mean, to be around women that are driven every single day, that come to, to work positive and believing in themselves and each other, it is so empowering. I wish everybody's workplace could be like mine is, and the world would be a whole lot better place. But I think you're well on your way, Lily. I really do. I think you're going to be in that driver's seat real soon. You're amazing. I'm going to take our final question from the back. All right, Kevin Walker with Voice of Muscatine. Coach, going off what this gentleman before had asked you, recruiting, fan base, national awareness, two years in a row, national runner-up. It hurts now, but six months from now, what will you be able to take away from it, or how will you feel when you know that you went head-to-head -head and hung in it the entire game with probably one of the best, if not the best team in the history of the sport? It's kind of hard to process right now. You know, I just, I, I'm just, I pray that our team will still get the, the fan support even when Caitlin leaves. I mean, uh, we have five seniors leaving, and so, yeah, we're going to be young. We're going to have some growing pains next year. But I hope that people respect the way that we play, the way that we do things, and they're going to want to support this young group of Hawkeyes next year um, just as much as they have, you know, after the success we've had the last couple of years. So I just, I just hope it maintains. Coach, we'd like to thank you for your time, and congratulations again on such a tremendous season. Thank you. I appreciate that.